Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today, when I checked my academia uh, webpage, I noticed that there was a, a post here called Conceptual Change in Advanced Mathematical Thinking, the Case of Tangent Line. So this was written by someone called Irene Bisa, uh, a typical mainstream moron. Uh, so what I did was I copied the reference to, in fact, I'll copy the entire paragraph she was referencing on page uh, I-168, I think. And, and this is how I addressed it. I said, the concept of tangent line, well, she said, the concept of tangent line is introduced to students in the Euclidean geometry context as a circle tangent. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, that's absolute bullshit. Um, the concept of tangent line existed long before Euclid and was not restricted to circles, but to any particular curve with the property of smoothness. Okay, Tangents are a tool to measure smoothness. Okay, That's how we determine whether a curve is smooth or not. Not because it's differentiable at every point. That's circular. The derivative relies on the tangent, not the smoothness or the tangent line on the derivative as the fucking morons in mainstream think, okay? So the concept of tangent line was understood correctly by the ancients. Euclid was merely a scribe. And what Euclid wrote down was correct. He was not defining tangent line. Nowhere in the elements did Euclid define tangent line. It was defined many, many, many decades before Euclid was born, okay? So, and it was so well understood that Euclid didn't feel a need to define it, okay? So, and I'll explain uh, why if you go with the bullshit mainstream definition that you run into a lot of problems. So, in fact, tangent lines were defined to all conic curves, the intersection of a straight line with a non-linear curve, not a straight line with itself. A straight line cannot be tangent to itself like the idiot moronic mathematics lecturers think. And it has to basically meet at one point, extend to both sides, and never crossing it at the point of tangency, okay? So to say that the cubic has a tangent line at x equals to zero <clears throat> is absolute bullshit. It may have half tangents there, if you want to call them that, <clears throat> but there is no tangent line there, okay, because a half tangent is not a tangent. So, and of course, mainstream calculus is inconsistent. You can have a tangent line and no derivative, and you can have a tangent line, and you can have a derivative in some cases. So, one of the uh, typical examples that I show people is this one here. Yeah. For example, uh, if you have, if you have, uh, let's see, I think it's x minus one to the power of a third plus one. That curve, if this is the axis and this is one, that curve has a, it goes through this point here in, in mainstream calculus, it has a tangent line according to their bullshit, which crosses through the point. Uh, but there's no derivative because the derivative is defined as rise over run, okay? So you can see these utterly syphilitic individuals have not carefully thought out uh, what they're trying to teach. They've not even tried to understand it, okay? So now, um, then I, I, I was quite abrupt. I told her that she and her mainstream colleagues are the ones who are confused. Moreover, had not Newton, Leibniz, and many others who came after them regarded a tangent line as such, mainstream calculus would have been very different. Students get it. It's just the retard mainstream mathematics professors and teachers who don't. So then she says two properties that characterize a circle tangent are the following. The line has only one common point with a curve, the line has a common point with a curve and leaves it on the same semiplane. What a load of bullshit. In this context, students create concept images. What the fuck is that? Which are based on the above properties. So I said nonsense. A tangent line is originally, by the way, described by uh, uh, as follows by Miriam Webster. So let's go there. So you'll see that the original adjective is 
meeting a curve or surface in a single point if a sufficiently small interval is considered. Okay, that means, that means, uh, now where did my pen go? Here. That means that you can have something like that. It, what it means is this sufficiently small interval, it doesn't matter if it cuts it anywhere else, you moron. It only talks about this sufficiently small interval. It's a tangent here. And no, it can never cross here, okay? That is the original definition of tangent line. It cannot ever cross at the point of tangency. So I had pointed this out to the hypocritical, stupid, and incorrigibly moronic mainstream mathematics academics many years ago. Guess what they did? They added an entry. Here's the entry. Under noun, they added three. A straight line is that limiting position of a secant of a curve through a fixed point and a variable point on the curve. So, so try to apply that to a straight line, you fucking moron professors of mathematics. Where, where is a straight line even secant to itself? God, they're so fucking stupid. Unbelievably stupid. And uh, so as an adjective, meeting a curve or a surface in a sig single point, if a sufficiently small interval is considered. The most recent entry was added by the Boons, the likes of Biza. Okay. So that's the one I just pointed out to you. That is the typical drivel one finds in mainstream calculus classes and all the shitload of calculus textbooks, especially ones like that uh, homosexual James Stewart and uh, Professor Gilbert Strang from MIT, you know, and all those uh, major baboons of mainstream mathematics. Um, after that, she says, students are taught the tangent line in the broader context of function graphs in calculus. So suddenly, uh, you know, the tangent depends on context. What a load of bullshit. I mean, you know, if, if you compared these mainstream mathematics academics to clowns in a circus, they'd probably juggle bullshit even better than the circus clowns. You know, it's unbelievable how they can say these things broader context of function graphs. Oh, really? How is that different to what the ancient Greeks, Newton, Leibniz, and everybody else uh, dealt with? It was the same context, you stupid. So I said, right, they were taught by know-nothing morons like you. Then she says, in this case, students have to reconstruct the previous concept in images in order to broaden their applicability range. Their applicability. In other words, they 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 created a load of shit in mainstream, and then what they needed to do is prop up the shit, buttress it, so to speak. You know, I mean, it was the shit pile was getting too big, so they had to buttress it. So they said a reconstructive generalization. She says a reconstructive generalization is needed. Just so hilarious. So. Uh, they were told to believe, students are told to believe that a tangent line now loses its primary property, that of never crossing a curve at the point of tangency. I mean, what the fuck is a point of tangency if a line can cross through it? It's meaningless garbage. It's certainly not this thing about uh, a straight line that is the limiting position of seeking because this doesn't work for a straight line, which, by the way, every straight line has the rise of around property. So it's kind of stupid to even think of it as anything else, uh, that it's equal to the uh, first derivative. That doesn't change the fact that a straight line cannot be tangent to itself, okay? Because that is a property of all straight lines. So even more ridiculous is to say that a straight line is tangent to itself, which is what I've just said, and try applying the drivel to a straight line. Then she says, many students fail to make this reconstruction effectively. Wow, a reconstruction. You mean uh, a botch up effectively so that your shit can be buttressed more successfully. The ones failing are not the students, but their idiot lecturers and teachers, namely you. Then she says, they act under the influence of the circle tangent, and create irrelevant concept images. And she's even put a quote in there by some nincompoop called Tall and Winner, 
I, I don't even care who they are. They're morons. So I said, what a prize load of bullshit and a poop reference to back up the bullshit. This poop reference here. You know, I mean, create irrelevant concept images. How can, first of all, how can a concept, I don't even know what a concept image is. She doesn't even explain these things. It's something that's just been cooked up in her bird brain. So students understand the concept correctly until they are brainwashed by their orangutan lecturers. And she says, we claim that this influence causes synthetic models, synthetic models, and we will try to investigate them. Actually, what you should investigate is your syphilitic brains. It is you, Irene Biza, that needs help. And I ended off by saying this. Just imagine if Archimedes interpreted a tangent line in the same way as the mathem mainstream mathematics baboons of the past 200 years. There'd be no quadrature of the parabola, no squaring of the circle, etc., etc. Had Newton been of the same mind, you wouldn't have a Newton root approximation method. <laughs> Can you imagine the root approximation method by interpreting the tangent line any differently? It wouldn't work because Newton understood the tangent line concept in the same way as the ancient Greeks. Your main problem, Irene, is that you don't know shit about mathematics, never mind calculus. You have exactly zero aptitude. There I like to use zero as a number. <laughs> I think I, I have the, uh, the privilege to do so for mathematics, and you should shouldn't be writing any articles on academia or anywhere else. And then, of course, I try to rub some salt in the wound by referring her to the actual truth about calculus, the non-fictional origins and history of calculus, which have nothing to do with the bullshit of limits or the syphilitic ideas of tangent line that one finds in the mainstream <clears throat> or any of that garbage. So I wanted to remind you of this because uh, it was some quite quite a few years ago when I told when I uh, routed mainstream academics and they added this this uh, extra this extra entry in Webster it wasn't there originally so I don't so I'm not sure of the exact date but there you go so you know of course, uh, Webster is going to go with the mainstream, and that's unfortunate now because students are going to be looking, looking at that and thinking, wow, okay, their teachers are right, but they're not actually. So, cut a long story short, <clears throat> become a follower on academia. This is me up here. So, if you come over here and you click my profile, this is where you become a follower, okay? And so, you'll click on one of these here to become a follower. Uh, it's a free website. You don't have to become a premium member, member. So you all you have to do is join. And if you're not already a subscriber to my YouTube, please become one. Click like, tell your friends about it. And uh, donate a few dollars. I I'm fighting this war on your behalf. I am fighting against the slings and arrows of baboons in high places. My name is John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.